Salam, hi guys! Welcome back to Dandelia Story. In this video, we continue to explore the times before the establishment of the Ottoman Empire about a warrior who was the third Sultan and one of the most famous Seljuk Sultans in history, a courageous warrior and a religious ruler, the son of Sultan Al Parslan. In the previous video, we unveiled the life story of Sultan Al Parslan and his conquest. So be sure to watch the previous video if you haven't. For today, here is the story of Sultan Malik Shah. Malik Shah was raised meticulously by his father, Sultan Al Parslan. He received religious knowledge from the scholars of that time and was also trained as a skillful fighter by the warriors. His interest in governing the country began when he was only 8 years old. When he was only 10 years old, he joined the Georgia campaign with his father and represented him at the military campaign. He conquered a Byzantine castle with his vizier Nizam Muluk. He was the one who insisted on the siege of Mariam Nisin castle and plays an important role in the capture of the castle. Sultan Al Parslan officially declared his beloved son Malik Shah as his crown prince in 1066. With a father as great as his, it would be typically hard to exceed his father's achievements. Nevertheless, Malik Shah was an Islamic-oriented and a skillful leader who was highly respected. He endured many severe difficulties. When Sultan Al Parslan was martyred in 1072, Malik Shah became the Sultan of Seljuk State when he was only 17 years old. Think about what we and our children have achieved at 17. Our forefathers were already ruling the world at such a young age. Like his father, Sultan Malik Shah had appointed Nizam Mulmu as his vizier with vast authority. He fought against the Kharakhanid and Ghaznavid states which threatened the Seljuks and he defeated them all. The greatest ideal of Malik Shah was to unite all Muslim states and to establish the Islam Union. He began to work hard to achieve this goal. Remember during his father's time, Sultan Al Parslan opened the doors of Anatolia. Sultan Malik Shah rapidly continued his father's conquest during his reign. Anatolian Seljuk state was established upon his order. He provided Sulaiman Shah sufficient military aids and Anatolia became a land of Islam. If you are wondering who is this Sulaiman Shah, well, Sulaiman Shah was one of the many famous Turkmen commanders. During Sultan Malik Shah's ruling, he put the state and army into an order and continued with the conquest campaigns as his father did. So there were many famous commanders who were raised such as Sulaiman Shah, Kutal Misoglu, Mansur, Artuk Bey and Tutak. These famous Turkmen commanders have achieved victories in Anatolia, defeating the Byzantine armies. Sulaiman Shah conquered Iznik, moved to Uskudar and took control of Bosphorus. More than 30 castles and towns were conquered around Mardin and Diyarbakir in a short time. After the Seljuk state has captured Diyarbakir and its surroundings in 1085, Marwani state was demolished. After capturing Urfa, Manbik and Aleppo castles, his armies went down to Antalya and reached the Mediterranean. Sultan Malik Shah took his cloth out and prayed on the ground. He took the sand from the sea back to Iran and splattered them on his father's grave, saying, Father, here is good news for you. Your son, whom you left as a child, has conquered the world from one end to another with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sultan Malik Shah expanded the lands of great Seljuk state from Kasgar to Boazici, from Caucasus to Yemen and Aden. He became the greatest political power of his period. He was never defeated during his reign and has achieved to turn the justice foundation of the state. 
As his vizier Nizam al -Muk said, he was therefore called just Sultan. He devoted his life to do good and useful things for Islam. In his prayers, he asked, O oh God, if I am to be useful for Islam, help me, make me victorious. If my opponent will be useful for Islam, then help them, make them victorious. His aim was not to earn personal glory, but all he thought about was the growth of Islam. During the reign of Malik Shah, a structured government organization and a permanent army consisting of half million soldiers was established with the help and effort of his Grand Vizier Nizam Momo. So Sultan Malik Shah added extra allowances into the state budget to protect poor people, scientists and artists. Scholars and artists were well protected and he had great interest in them. He often visited the scholars personally and respected their knowledge and personalities. Important scholars such as Imam Ghazali, Kasgarli Mahmud and Kurkani were raised during his period. His vizier Nizam Momok had strong political influence. Nizam Momok pioneered the establishment of Nizamiya Madrasas which had great contributions for ideological development in the 10th century. We can see that since Sultan Al Parslan's time, he has put great effort into establishing these educational institutions all around the Seljuk lands and donated one tenth of his income to these organizations. Sultan Malik Shah followed his father's legacy and developed the Seljuk's land and prospered the people. He displayed a great interest in literature, science, and art. His reign was memorable for the splendid mosque of his capital Isfahan. His people enjoyed internal peace and religious tolerance. Through all these victories and glory, do you think that everything was a bed of roses for Sultan Malik Shah? Of course not. There were dark shadows amidst all those glory. Like all other sultans, of course, there are many challenges that Sultan Malik Shah had to overcome. Remember we mentioned before that it's very common that when a new sultan start his ruling, the sultan will face with internal opposition. It's no different for Sultan Malik Shah. During the first years of his reign, his uncle Kavud had revolted to seize the rule. He defeated his uncle and established order within his country. His very own brother Takash, governor of Khorasan, also revolted against him before. To protect the order, he had to imprison his brother and punish him by blinding his eyes. Sultan Malik Shah spent the first two years of his reign by appeasing the internal fights and defending the borders of the state. We mentioned a lot about his vizier Nizam Momo, who served as a strong backbone for Seljuk state since Al Parslan's time. However, do you know that Sultan Malik Shah ever had conflicts with his grand vizier before? What happened was the clash in opinions when Nizam al counseled him about favoring the claims to succession of Malik Shah's eldest son by his first wife against a son by his second wife. So there was a period of great tension but they eventually managed to meet on common grounds. Another dark shadow that surrounded Sultan Malik Shah was that his relations deteriorated with the Caliph of Baghdad who had married Malik Shah's daughter and neglected her. He had ordered the Caliph to leave Baghdad where he died there suddenly, leaving the empire to disintegrate through internal quarrels. During Sultan Malik Shah's reign, there was an infamous enemy called Hassan Sabah. Hassan Sabah was born in Iran to a Shiite family. He was an Iranian nationalist rather than a Muslim. He hated the Turkish domination of Iran, which began with the Ghaznavid and Kharakhanid dynasties and later rise of the Seljuks. So he developed new tactics based on rebellion and assassination to fight against the Seljuk Turks. With his men, he began to look for a base to establish his headquarters. 
he was planning to seize the Alamut castle and started to gather supporters. The anti-Orthodox terrorist movement arise in 1092 under the leadership of Hassan Sabah. Nizam Momuk was assassinated in the same year, 14 October 1092. He was stabbed by someone who was disguised as a dervish and was seriously injured. Hearing about the assassination, Sultan Malik Shah came to the vizier's tent and recited the Quran into his ears. Nizam Mulmuk passed away listening to these divine verses. He left Sultan Malik Shah with a great loss. His funeral was taken to Isfahan and buried in the tomb next to the madrasa he built. What you should know is that the Christians in Anatolia were already having problems with the Byzantine rule. Their tyrant lords were ruling over Anatolia with fraud, high taxes and there was weakness in administration of the palace. There were Byzantine commanders who declared themselves as emperors and caused lots of pressure for the people. So the people were actually celebrating the arrival of Muslim leaders who treated them with justice and brought peace and prosperity together. Sultan Malik Shah earned the people's respect and won their hearts. His vizier Nizam Mulmul described Sultan Malik Shah as follows. Malik Shah is religious, respectful to scholars, good to spiritualists, compassionate to the poor and just to the people. These are attributes very rare in a world leader. He was therefore called just Sultan. Thanks to these attributes, science and justice was praised, peace and welfare was ruled, and so a wealthy empire was established in his country. Sultan Malik Shah died on 19 November 1092 while he was hunting. It was said that he was most likely poisoned by the caliph or the supporters of Nizam al -Mul, but the cause of his death was uncertain. His body was taken back to Isfahan where it was buried in a madrasa. Upon his death, the Seljuk Empire fell into chaos as rival successors and regional governors carved up their empire and waged war against each other. The situation within the Seljuk lands was further complicated by the beginning of the First Crusade in 1096. The First Crusade had somehow detached large portions of Syria and Palestine from Muslim control in 1098 and 1099. The success of the First Crusade was partially an attribute to the political confusion which resulted after Malik Shah's death. In the upcoming video, we will unfold the story on the background of the First Crusade which caught the Islamic State off guard and why it actually began. So if you enjoy this kind of content, don't forget to hit on the notification bell so you get notified when we post the next video. Like and share this video to show support and subscribe to Dandelia Story for more of such sharing. That's all we have for you today. Thank you so much for watching this video and see you soon in the next video. Assalamualaikum.